Um, you held a workshop at the conference called How to Communicate Politics. So what, in your opinion, is the basics or how can we successfully communicate politics? I, I think it uh, begins at the grassroots level. Uh, at getting, getting your candidate out there, meeting the voters, and finding out what really matters to them. It's communicating the most important issue to voters in a way they understand you as a leader, you as a problem solver, you as the right person at the right time to address that issue. And at grassroots, uh, getting out shaking hands, telling people that you're the strong leader that will help drive the district, the country, the nation in the right direction. And communicating that is, uh, for any campaign, difficult, but it involves a lot of hard work on the individual level, uh, whether it be through television, internet, YouTube, uh, through program universe, university programs like that, the, the program the American Center put on uh, Masadic University. Mm -hmm. Very good program because it helped educate the, the, the future workers of campaigns. And spreading that message is going to involve a lot of different media sources. But it has to be about the thing, the, the issues that people care about. It can't just be about party or individual. It has to be about issues that people care about and how you're the positive leader. And the most successful way to do that is the grassroots getting out there and meeting the voters, meeting the people you want to represent. You came here as a successful campaign manager. So what is, according to your opinion, the key to a successful campaign? Uh, having a good candidate that understands the district. I mean, without a doubt, if I had a candidate who didn't know the district, didn't want to work hard, it would be next to impossible. You can't run a campaign with nobody at the top. Uh, in America, we're very candidate-centered. We're not party-centered. So what the party stands for may not be exactly what the candidate stands for. Every district is different. And if you don't have a candidate that understands the district and is willing to work to represent that district, then you can't win. And I was lucky enough to have a very motivated candidate who will be a great congressman because he worked nonstop. And he, his, his efforts <clears throat> drove us to, to work even harder at ours. What would be, in your opinion, the most important tool? Oh, the most campaign? important tool? Yeah. Ah, the most important tool in a campaign? Mm -hmm. To win. Volunteers. Volunteers. 100% volunteers. And you cannot win if you don't have the people supporting you. What a life of a campaign manager looks like. Oof, um, the life of a campaign manager, if your candidate is working 16 hours a day, you work 18, 19 hours a day. Mm -hmm. You always have to work a little bit more than everybody else to make sure that nothing goes unnoticed, to stop any unintended consequences, to make sure things are prepared correctly. You get up maybe at 8 a.m., maybe at 8.30 a.m. Doesn't sound like it's too late, but the fact that you work until 2, p 2 a.m., well, you're getting six hours of sleep at night. You don't have a, a life outside of that. I mean, to be honest with you, uh, if you're a campaign manager from an area in which you live, it may be different. But if you're a campaign manager that moved to another state to run a campaign, all you know is your job. So you've committed your, your all, your life, to working for a candidate, to see them elected. Everything you do every day has one goal, and that's to elect a leader for that district. Uh, maybe you're from that state originally and you know it. Maybe you're from that district originally and you know it. But your family isn't there. Your life isn't there. You're staying at a, a house, maybe a relative's place, sleeping on a futon, eating fast food. The amount of pizza a campaign manager eats would kill a normal human being. Uh, drinking soda, ca you know, cases of Diet Pepsi a week. Coffee is your lifeblood. You know, they... It, a campaign manager is different from any other position on a campaign because any other, any other position may be a little bit more involved in one thing. You have to be an expert at everything. And you have to make sure everything is running smoothly. You have to make sure your candidate is prepared. You have to make sure the mail is going out on time. You have to make sure that you're hitting your targets for doors walked. You have enough volunteers. You're doing the strategy. Uh, all of that is very time consuming. There's no weekends in a camp. You know, like a, a weekend, oh, let's go out and have lunch, relax, sleep in. My Monday looked just like my Saturday and my Friday and my Sunday. Every day was a weekday for me. Weekends were even more important than weekdays. 
because you had a greater opportunity to reach people. So I worked harder on weekends than I did during the week, which isn't, you know, it, instead of 14, I'd work 16 hours. It, it was a lot more effort on the weekends. So you're go, go, go for however long you're on the campaign. Uh, I spent five months working nonstop. I think I got away for two or three weekends the whole entire time just because if I didn't, I would have burned out completely. If the campaign had gone for another two months, I probably wouldn't be here right now. Well, apparently I'd still be on the campaign, but I'd also be in a, a very sickly state. It's a lot of activity, but that's how you win. You have to commit your all to electing a candidate you think will represent the district, and that's, it's, it's a tough life. It really is a tough life, but it's very, very rewarding, because in the end, when you win, it makes all of that hard work worth it. I, I, I think of it, the closest thing you can come to military service is serving as a campaign manager because the pressure is very, very intense. From different topic, um, many Czechs seem to be quite <coughs> puzzled by the phenomenon of the Tea Party. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us what, in your opinion, are the prospects of this movement? In the Czech Republic? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> are you in a I mean, Czech Tea Party? Well, we don't Would it be the one. beer party? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in, in the United States. In the United States? Yeah. I think the Tea Party is a, a fantastic movement. I think it'll be sustainable. I think it's more local than it is national. The Tea Party rose out of uh, what was a national discontent on the local level. Individuals who came together under different groups, different banners uh, to represent the, the disaffected, those who felt like things were being done they didn't approve of uh, nationally, but they wanted to change things locally. And I think that the prospects are very good for the Tea Party. Uh, and when they, when they organized on the local level, they were extremely effective and they helped propel uh, many candidates to victory. We relied upon their support intensely. They provided a number of volunteers who were very, very motivated, who wanted to get out there and change things. On the national level, I don't think they're an organization that wants to go in a national direction. They want to be independent and to be co-opted by any banner, Democrat or Republican, isn't in the nature of the Tea Party, let alone to have a nationally organized Tea Party. They want to remain localized. And I think that's fantastic because it allows them to keep an eye on everybody. and lets them be that check and balance to the candidates they've elected.